Hello guys, today I'm going to be checking out the RTX 3050 in 2023. This card was a decent pickup in 2022 when it came out, since all the other cards were being scalped and were super overpriced. But is it worth it today? I guess we'll find out. Starting it off with Spider-Man Remastered, going to be playing the game at 1080p, with the high preset, no DLSS, and no ray tracing. And here we are with the settings. Alright, let's get going. Getting around 80 FPS. Quite a great start for the 3050. Game's not lagging or stuttering at all either. It's running beautifully so far, actually. We are missing at 5 gigs, but it is slowly climbing up. But either way, we have 8 gigabytes available to us, so we should have plenty of headroom there regardless. Well, let's head to Central Park. That area is super intensive on the graphics card. Nice little crash there. What are you guys doing? Now, in Central Park, we're getting around 60 to 70 FPS. So, again, very nice, very smooth experience. The game's not lagging or stuttering again. It's just fantastic, to be honest. The game does look a bit blurry with TAA enabled, so I would disable that personally. But if you do like the look of TAA, then I guess you can keep it on and just enjoy your game. Alright, and here we are with RT. I'm gonna be using the high preset as well, as you can see right here. And let's see what we can get. Wow, 60 FPS. I'm super surprised to be honest. This card can do ray tracing, it is supported. But, I mean, you really shouldn't. In those heavier titles, you'll be struggling to get 40-50 FPS, but Spider-Man. You can do RT at the high settings and still have a great time without DLSS. You can enable DLSS if you really wish to, to get more frames, but I think 60 FPS is, is plenty for this game, so no complaints for me. Now the game does feel like it's stuttering occasionally, but it's very minor, and it's not really ruining the experience too much. FPS is dropping down into the mid 40s there for a second. I said mid 40s, I mean the mid 50s. Um, but you know what? It didn't feel too bad still. It's still very playable. If I wasn't looking at the FPS counter, I couldn't probably tell anyway. So overall, at 1080p high settings, you're going to be getting around 60 to 80 FPS, depending on where you are. But with RT enabled, you're going to be sitting in the low 50s, all the way up into the low 60s. So overall, a great experience all around. Alright, let's move on to our next game. And for our second game, we're playing GTA 5 at 1080p at the very high settings. The menus are lagging because this is GTA 5 and it's very buggy still. Alright, here we are at 1080p, we're going to be using MSA 2X. And everything else is set to its max value of very high, except for the grass quality and the shadow quality. There we are, and for advanced graphics, all disabled. Running this game should be no issues at all, especially in the campaign mode. In online, it's a whole different beast, so it'll be far more intensive, especially on the CPU. But hopefully we can get 60 FPS still, with the max settings. But I guess we'll see, what is that guy doing? Oh my god. Getting very dangerous right now. Getting 120 FPS, GP is fully maxed out, which is good to see. We're not getting super bottlenecked. And VRAM is sitting at 4.3 gigs, so we got plenty of headroom there as well. It's kind of crazy how the 3050 has 8 gigs of VRAM, and so does the 3060 Ti and 3070. Those cards definitely need far more than this card. I mean, it's fine with 8 gigs, to be honest. I'm not going to complain about more VRAM. Alright, let's go ahead and ping the location of the coast over here. And let's drive there, because that area is very grassy, and that will tank your FPS. So let's go ahead and drive there. Okay, you know what? I looked at the frame time counter. Ooh, it feels a bit more laggy. Yep, sitting at 78 FPS now. I definitely felt that FPS. Who did I kill? Who did I just kill? I heard a little squeal. Oh, no. I apologize, whoever that was. But FPS is in the 80s now, so it is far more laggy. Feels... More sluggish compared to 120 FPS, obviously. So yeah, 1080p in the campaign mode at the very high settings is going to be sitting around 150 FPS and all the way down into the high 70s. Now it's going to jump into online and compare the FPS over there. I'm sure we get CP bottleneck though. Okay, he left the game, thankfully. Thankfully he left. <laughs> it was ruining the game <laughs> immediately as soon as I joined. Which car do we take out? Let's take, let's take the Porsche, I think. Just, just try the Porsche out. FPS is sitting in the 80s now, getting CPU bottlenecked. So we need a far better CPU for the online, pretty much. But still above 60 FPS with a 3700X. So it's a great all-around CPU for this card. It will make you CPU bottlenecked at times at 1080p. But, you know what? It's still above 60, so... Oh! Shouldn't have any issues there. Saved it somewhat. <laughs> Okay, let's go and drive up to the hill because it still does exist here and the grass is still there. FPS is sitting in the low 80s, GP is fully maxed out. Still, again, same FPS as the campaign. Then we're sitting in the high 40s and the mid 80s. Alright, let's jump into our next game. And on to Forza Horizon 5. We're going to be playing the game at 1080p at the high settings. Here we are. 
This game is one of the more optimized games on the list. It pretty much runs on anything at this point. So on the 3050, you can get 100 FPS plus quite easily at the high settings. You can play the game at ultra settings as well, or even extreme, but it's not really a giant leap in quality, it's just a slight improvement, but FPS will be sitting probably in the 70s and 80s at that point. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and drive through the city now. That area is the most demanding on the whole map, and we'll see what we can get over there. Going through the tunnel now, what are we getting? Okay, 75 was the lowest FPS, so still above 60. Game wasn't lagging or stuttering at all either. And driving through the city normally, we're getting around 95 to 105 FPS, so way above 60 there. Our fourth game is Battlefield 2042. Playing the game at 1080p at a mix of medium to high settings. Here we go. And the road tracing, obviously. Alright, let's jump into it. Let me get out of this tank. FPS is sitting in the 80s up to the 90s occasionally as well. You could go ahead and lower the settings or use DLSS to get more frame rate, but I think for me I want to get a good good mix of uh, I guess quality and performance. And playing at 80 FPS is not that bad to be honest. The game is feeling quite decent still. But for a game like this, I guess you could prefer to go with 120 or 140 FPS, which might be a bit hard to do with the current settings. Hello, what are you doing? Kill myself and just flank up. No, come on, man. Go up, go up, go up, go up. Don't kill me now, please. Stop trying to kill me. Heal up. <laughs> Am I up? I put some armor on, actually. There we go. Oh, come on now. Ugh. They really want me. Okay, you're dead. You're dead, too. I got lucky there, I can't even lie. I'm gonna come trying to kill you. Plus three. I was trying to melee him, but I think he was looking at me. The game does stutter occasionally, to be honest. In some areas, you will feel some stuttering, but I think overall, it's running quite great. Playing the game with the Call of Duty LSS mode. It is raining now, so it could be a bit more intensive on the GPU, but... I think overall we gained around 10 to 20 FPS over what we had at native 1080p. You can use the balanced DLSS mode as well, but the game will look far more blurry compared to the quality mode. Oh, I haven't got the I haven't got the launcher on this class. I guess the heli gets to live another day. Ooh, the rocket's going off again. That's a bit laggy there, but it's fine. Go, go, go. Oh, Pooh actually fighting underneath it. You guys are toast. Alright. Let's move on to our next game. This will be a 2 in 1 special, I guess. We can do Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. But starting it off with MW2. Playing the game at a mix of medium, high, and some settings on low as well. And here we are. Fight back. A lot of settings here. And then FLV is at 103. Messi! Messi's gone. FPS is sitting in the mid 90s up to the high 90s. And occasionally in the 100s. Oh my god. Look, they keep chasing me. Kill that guy as well. Cool UAV in. I can't even see the map, I forgot about that. So yeah, this game will run worse on an NVIDIA card. Named the equivalent of the 3050 will run far better in this game. But still, we're getting 100 FPS quite easily. You got a Harrier. I gotta get inside. Get out of last time, buddy. Low on ammo. Sorry, Messi. Can I get your gun? Look at that. Fancy, really, let's go call this in. <laughs> this will be for our teammates, because I can't use it. But yeah, so far the game's running beautifully. No lagging or stuttering that I can feel. And FPS is honestly pretty great as well. You could lower the settings or use uh, DLSS to get better frames, but honestly. I don't like the look of the LSS in this game. So I'm gonna keep it off. Let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and start mowing them down. Where are they at? Is Messi still here? One revenge. <laughs> nice. You're dead. Buddy, why are you hiding back there, huh? I see you, you know that, right? I see you. You're dead. 
What are you doing? Oh, that was a pretty big freeze there for a second actually. That was that first stutter of the match. Has been mostly very clean and very smooth, but... Hey, stop running. Oh, Messi. You're dead. Why are you running? Oh, I made the final kill. Please summon the final kill. No. Alright. Let's move on to Warzone 2. And Warzone 2. We're using the same settings as MW2. So jumping into the settings and then graphics. Here we are. Now I'm going to be doing two portions for this test. I'm going to be landing down here. A lot of water here. And landing in the city area and looking over the map. Indoors we're getting around 80 FPS, but we can drop down into the 70s as well. This water looks pretty bad to be honest. It looks pretty much non-existent. Game is stuttering a little bit, but FPS is doing just fine. I'm gonna get back up here. Saw a lot of people landing here, but I don't really see any of them. If it wasn't too, you're gonna need a powerful CPU. If you want to get a lot of frames. Can use the LSS at this point and get, you know, above 100 FPS with ease, but if your CPU isn't powerful enough, it's not gonna matter. The game's just gonna look worse. This is obviously broken, but I don't know why I try to use that. It's, it's water in it. Yeah, the game is stuttering and lagging quite heavily in this area. Oh! This gun does not do any damage at distance. I need to get a better gun. Oh, he's got a CDL skin. I'm in trouble. Alright, getting 130 FPS in the Gulag. It's a pretty good start, but wish we could get that on the real map. Alright, hopefully we do well. Going down the left side, okay. Hello? Game is stuttering a little bit. I am running all these games off an SSD as well, just keep that in mind. There's no hard drives involved. I know hard drives make the game stutter a bit more. Alright, well I absolutely fell off in the, in the gulag, so... I have to restart the match, and we're gonna be landing in the main city now. I'm gonna land on one of the skyscrapers and look over the map. Okay, let's just land up here. The game does stutter quite a bit at the start as well, but not a big deal. It's just a cutscene. But, as you can see, VRM is all the way up to 7 gigs, so we only have 1 gig left over. So playing the game at the highest settings will use up all your VRAM and the game's going to be stuttering even harder. So just keep that in mind. Alright, almost here. Getting 90 FPS so far, so actually not too bad. Landing- I should probably get a gun before doing this, huh? Ah, I convenient, the Chimera. Oh, this is not the Chimera. Hello? You're dead, see you in the Gulag. That audio freaked me out. Okay. Now that we have the roof of ourselves, let's come up here, and we're getting, honestly, yeah, we're getting 80 FPS. Ooh, game is stuttering quite heavily, pushed me off. Yeah. So we're getting 80 FPS, but the game was stuttering so bad that I fell off, <laughs> off the rooftop. Up here though, yeah, around 80 FPS on average. It's still quite playable, the game doesn't feel too bad. The stuttering is a bit random, but overall runs pretty decently. On land, we're getting 112 FPS. Very smooth, very, I guess, fluid. Can't really feel any stuttering at all. Pretty great so far. Why am I even trying to get in there? Kind of funny because I was just here in MW2 <laughs> playing on this multiplayer map. Now we're back here in Warzone 2. So, overall, in Warzone 2, we're going to be getting around 70 FPS all the way up to 120 FPS, uh, depending on where you are. The game could be stuttering quite heavily as well, keep that in mind. VRM research is also way up to 7 gigs and you only have 8 gigs available to you. So lowering the settings a bit more might be the smart thing to do. That's really up to you. But I think overall it's a decent experience. Could be better, but this game isn't really optimized for Nvidia cards properly yet. It runs much better on AMD, so, so we can't really do much about that. If you like to play Warzone 2 a lot, or just Warzone in general, you should be looking at an AMD card. Alright, let's move on to our next game. Our seventh game, I think, is The Witcher 3. I'm going to have two portions for this video as well. I'm going to be on DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 with ray tracing and DLSS. Uh, where's Roach? Roach isn't responding to me. Okay, found Roach. He was just, I guess, hiding somewhere. But jumping into the settings, we're going to graphics. 
Playing the game at the high preset. Try playing the game on ultra settings, but ultra I was getting around 50 FPS, so trying to get 60 FPS for this Come game on. at least. And we don't have the LSS available to us in Dactus 11, so uh, we kind of forced into slowing the quality of the game and getting 60 FPS that way. But we're getting some stuttering at the start. This is normal. This will go away normally after a couple of minutes. But as you can see, FPS is sitting in the 60s and all the way up into the 70s. We're going to be sitting at 2.4 gigs, so we've got plenty of headroom there. And GP's fully max start sitting at 100%. So, this game in Dactus 11 mode is very easy to run. I think this is also from 2015 as well. It's on the PS4. So, not that hard to run at the high settings at this point. But at Ultra and Ultra Plus, it's going to cause your FPS to drop down into the 40s and 50s. Uh, which is, I guess, fine. It is still playable that way. But the mouse movement isn't going to be as responsive as 60 FPS. 70 FPS. So it's really up to you if you want to get a better looking game, then play at Ultra Plus settings oh, and get like 30 to 40 to FPS. Or you can play the game at high settings and get 60 plus FPS. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and quit out, enable ray tracing, and come back when that's done. Oh my god. What is this? The game is only rendering in the top left hand side of the screen. And we're getting 28 oh, FPS. This is with Darkness 12. Ray tracing enabled as well. And at medium settings with DLSS set to balanced. That's why I was recommending using Darkness 11 until this gets sorted out. It's still not like perfectly optimized, but as you can see, FPS is sitting at 30 at medium settings with DLSS enabled. So this card can do ray tracing, but the performance isn't going to be amazing at times. And here are the settings. I can show it off to you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next game. Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna be our seventh or eighth game. And we're playing the game at 1080p at the high settings. Should be on graphics. Using DLSS at the quality. And these are the rest of the settings. This game is very demanding, so I would highly recommend using DLSS. And at the quality preset, it looks fantastic anyway. So you might as well use it. It's free FPS. As you can see, FPS is getting pretty close into the 60s, so without the LSS, we're going to be sitting in the 50s and 40s probably at this point. So we're getting saved by the LSS, pretty much. But the game is running beautifully. There's no stuttering, there's no lagging. This game is pretty buggy still. It is what it is. It hasn't been fully fixed yet, but for the most part, it does run pretty great. And most of the issues have been fixed as well. Alright, we're in a different level now. And we're going to start up a fight. And we're going to see how we run it here. So getting up close, all the sparks coming off this guy will cause the FPS to drop down into the 50s, the mid 50s right there. So as you can see, it's not a perfect 60, but to be honest, it's not that bad either. I couldn't really feel the stuttering or lagging. So overall, it is pretty good. We had that one dip into the 50s, but it's not that big of a deal. It felt fine still. The game wasn't stuttering or anything like that. But on average, we're going to be sitting in the low 70s and even the mid 60s at times. Alright, I'm going to go enable ray tracing and I'm going to see how this runs with RT enabled. I've gone ahead and enabled RT using the medium preset and we're playing the game at night time so we can see the reflections better. But as you can see, we're getting 40 FPS. The game looks fantastic with all the lighting. I love it. But honestly at this point, I think a 30 FPS cap is the way to go so we can have some headroom in case of a heavy situation so we don't fall below 30 and feel all the stutters and you know, all those like lag spikes. Dropping down to the 30s here, the mid 30s, not too bad, still the game is running just fine, can't really feel any stuttering. The mass movement, or I guess the keyboard inputs, feel fine as well. Aiming would be pretty difficult with keyboard and mouse at 30 FPS, but it's it can be done, you know, it can still be done. But a controller might be ideal at this point. Alright, let's move on to the next game. Now it's time for some Need for Speed. We're going to be playing the game at the high preset, pretty much. Some settings are set to Ultra as well. At 1080p, no DLSS. These are the settings. Let's get going. This game can be very CPU bound, especially in the city areas. So if you've got a weaker CPU than this, your FPS might be lower than what you're seeing here. But once you leave the city area, if you are being CPU bottlenecked, your FPS should go all the way up again to like 80 FPS pretty much. This BMW, by the way, I got for 100% in the game, but I haven't upgraded it yet. It's all visual customization. So it's a rice car pretty much. It's a B class. But <laughs> it's been done up, so the outside looks cool. I just haven't had the time to go and actually upgrade the engine and all that. But I'll do it at some point. 
But as you can see, FPS is going to be sitting in the mid-70s. There's no stuttering, there's no lagging. The game's running beautifully. We actually have the headroom to play the game at ultra settings as well if we really want to. Um, but I'm not going to do that because the game looks pretty much the same anyway. Now, with all these games that have DLSS available to them, you can play the game at 440p and 4K even. And get a decent experience. You know, 40, 50 FPS, even 60 FPS at times. Just lower the quality a little bit to medium. And you should have a good time at those resolutions as well. Alright. I think that's enough of NFS. Let's move on to the next game. Alright, here we are on CSGO. Playing the game at 1080p. And a mix of low to medium settings. And some settings are set to high. To make the skins look better. For this game though, it doesn't really matter. It's an esports title. Same with Valorant and like League of Legends. You'll be pretty much CPU bound for the most part. As you can see, we're getting... Actually, no, we're not getting speed bound at times. GPU is sitting at 75% usage on average, but it can go up to 95% at times. This really depends what you're looking at and where you are. But regardless, we are able to get above 300 right, FPS even with the CPU, which is not the fastest CPU anymore. But you know what? For this card and for this game, it does a fine job. Okay, that game ended, so on to a new game. As you can see, we're getting around 400 FPS in this lobby. The enemy. And you're sitting around 95%, so it's pretty much maxed out. But there are times where you will be getting CP bottlenecked, and GP will be sitting around 70% usage pretty much. And at that point, you're going to be needing a faster CPU to be able to keep up with this GPU. Now, if you want more FPS than this, you can obviously go ahead and lower the settings, because I'm playing the game at a mix of medium to high settings right now to make the skins look better. But again, with this current setup, we're getting around 300 FPS all the way up to 440 FPS pretty much. And occasionally 500 FPS as well, but I think in rank mode or in comp, this is pretty much not going to be happening. You're going to be getting 300 FPS on average, and something like that. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to Red Dead Redemption 2. Alright, here we are in Red Dead Redemption 2. Playing the game at a mix of high to ultra slash medium settings at 1080p. And we've got DLSS at the quality as well. Here we are 1080p, and these are the rest of the settings. Okay, we're going. This game is from 2018, but it is still so intensive today that we have to use DLSS to get 60 FPS at the higher presets. But you know what? The game looks fantastic even with DLSS enabled. You can also play the game at medium settings and not use DLSS if that's what you like. But I think playing the game at a higher preset and using DLSS is a much better choice. What? CPU is being 1% of power for a second. CPU usage is around 8% to 22%, so... It's kind of actually all over the place. We're getting up to 40% and then down to 5% again. I think it might be a bug, but we'll just leave it as it is. But overall, the RTX 3050 is a great card, but I'm not really sure if the price tag of 250 USD is really fair. If you can find this card for 150 or 175 USD, it might be a better buy. Oh, okay. We're getting, we're getting jumped here, are we? There's you, buddy. Now, if you are running a GTX 1060 or a GTX 1660 or 1650, I would avoid this card. You do get DLSS and ray tracing, which does help the card a bit, but in terms of raw power, you're getting a slight bump. It's much better for you to go ahead and get like an AMD card, like an RX 6600 XT or 6600, or an RTX 2060 even, or like an RTX 2060 Super, than to get this card. If you're using an older card and you want an upgrade, then this card is a decent choice if you can find it at the right price. Alright, I think that's about it for the video guys. Thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time for the next video. See you guys there.